Hello, welcome to San Rosa Creations and thank you for joining me in today's video. Today I want to talk about how easy it is to take your pattern pieces and make a projector file in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I use the Adobe Suite just because um, I am used to it. That's what I'm most comfortable with. Um, so I do pay for the monthly membership just because um, I use Adobe Illustrator for pattern making and making projector files, uh, as well as SVG files. I use Adobe Premiere for my video editing. Um, I use Adobe Photoshop for photo editing. Um, just a lot of reasons um, that I do use uh, the Adobe Suite. Um, other options are Affinity Designer, which are uh, a one-time price. I'll be sure to put a link to both of those, uh, the Adobe Suite and Affinity Designer down in the comments. Um, but anyway, so the point of today is that um, I always like to focus on accessibility and projector files are huge, a huge accessible feature, feature um, in patterns that I buy. It's come to a point where like I particularly will not buy a pattern, uh, especially a closed pattern if it doesn't come with a projector file. Um, so there's a select few um, creators that do provide projector files, not only in clothes, but in bags too. And those are the kind of makers that I like to stick with uh, because I like files like that. Um, it makes it easier for me to make um, bags and clothes. Um, I am neurodivergent, so I tend to struggle with like multi-step instructions and processing directions. Um, and so when there are less steps, when I don't have to tape uh, pattern pieces together, um, that makes it more accessible for me. Um, I know it may seem like projectors and SVG files are like a luxurious feature, um, but oftentimes those features are really helpful for the disabled community. Um, so I'd like to advocate for, to see more of those things from pattern makers, um, because we, when you think about someone who's got like arthritis or a mobility issue um, where they might not, they want to craft too, right? They want to create, but you know, too many steps wears them out or, you know, uh, cutting and labeling is is an extra step that you know makes the project harder for them so that's why I do love SVG and projector files um, because they do make it more accessible for myself um, so let's go ahead and get started uh, projector files are super easy not scary um, so let's go see what they look like hello everyone in my last video um, I talked about how to use Adobe Illustrator in order to make SVG files and today we are going to talk about how to make a projector file. Um, so the first thing is you want to have your original pattern pieces open in Adobe Illustrator um, or however you know if you want to use Affinity that's fine. Affinity Designer I believe is um, another version has similar features to Adobe Illustrator and has vector files um, but I'm going to be talking about Adobe Illustrator today. Um, so you're going to have your pattern pieces. You're going to create a new um, file that is going to measure 47 inches by 33 inches. Um, and that's going to create an artboard that is 47 inches by 33 inches. Now, the reason I do that is because that is the size of a AO a zero whatever you call it file a printer file um, and so I just like to make my AO file and my projector file the same um, that way when I am making a pattern like it's one less file I have to make um, so I make the AO file the same as the the projector file um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you want to create a square for the projector file um, so I click the square tool and I create the square I'm gonna click my click my uh, select tool and I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna go over here to properties I'm gonna make sure it's a two inch square I like to um, for my projector files provide a two inch square and I also like to make my stroke a two or a three because that makes it a little bit darker um, so I have my projector my artboard um, all set and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy all of my pattern pieces to the projector um, and then I'm going to organize them now um, you could organize them how you like it could be that one artboard is all of your um, exterior 
pieces in your pattern and then that your um, art second artboard. So if I wanted to create another artboard, my second artboard would house um, my interior pieces or a, maybe a different size. Um, so I think I showed this in my previous video, but if I have like a halves file, then what I want to do is I want to collect select the um, direct select tool. I'm going to click my middle line and I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to copy and paste this file piece uh, because any line that is created in the file is going to end up, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It's not an SVG file. Um, if it was an SVG file, that middle line would end up becoming, oh, see, look, it made a cut line anyways. And I don't want that. Let's see. So I'm just going to group it then. Command G groups it. Oh, when did that line keep coming up? Anyways, but, um, and that's my file size. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about is layers. Um, so I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to add a layer on top. And I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to shrink this one a little bit smaller and I'm going to add another layer and do the same thing and shrink it and then that provides me layers. Now that I have all my pattern pieces, all I have to do is save this as a projector file. So I'm going to hit file, save as, or sorry, file save as on your computer, save computer, uh, what we're talking about how to make projector files. Oops, I did that wrong. Sorry about that. So you're going to click save as and then you're going to want to click Adobe PDF. Okay. And again, um, when we're talking about artboards, um, right now it has both artboards chosen and I don't want that. So I'm gonna click. So right now it has all of the artboards selected and I don't want that. I don't want it to save both artboards. I wanna save uh, just the first artboard. So I'm gonna click range and then I'm gonna select one and save it. Click save PDF. Now, when I go to my files, I have this untitled PDF and then when I click it, I'm going to, oh, it's going to open in Adobe um, PDF. Okay. This is my projector file. Uh, I would write right here. I forgot to do that, but I would write, you know, two inch by two inch um, so that you could see that. And someone who has a projector file uh, should know um, there's a lot of settings that go into setting up a projector file. For me personally, I know 39% is the correct magnification for my laptop for this to measure correctly on, um, on my cutting bo board. Um, but again, I'll put a link in the comments for the projectors for sewing group because they have really good um, notes on how to set up. Um, and this is what I was talking about, about the layers. So if I have layers, um, layer one is all of my objects, right? It's my two inch test square. It's all these pattern pieces and it's these three. If I turn off layer one, then it just gives me layer two and three. Um, and so that works when you're doing sizing, especially for clothes. Um, you can layer the clothing. There are way more detailed videos out there about how to do clothing and projectors and all that. I'm not going to get into that because I mostly focus on bag making. Um, I like to make clothes, but I am not about to be a, a clothes pattern maker. Um, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, if you have sizes, you can, you can turn that on or off. Um, oh, I put it on the same layer. Um, but yeah, you can turn that on or off. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to projector files. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, like I said, projector files are an accessibility feature and they're really easy to make. 
uh, if you're already making a pattern, um, especially if you're using Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator to make your pattern pieces, um, then you can just import them and that's, that's how you go. Um, so one thing I did want to talk about is if you have an image, um, so if you have an image, you can also import that and then trace the shape. So what you would do is you would just import the image and then make sure the sizing is right. And then you would like select it and then you can click image trace and it would trace that image for you if you don't have vector files and convert it to a vector file. Just kind of keep in mind that it will also copy the text. So if you have text in there, you'll have to like, it will, it will image trace those, but you'll also have to, um, you'll also have to, um, erase those, um, as you make them. But yeah, that's projectors, projector files. I just wanted to add one more quick note that I totally forgot and that's labeling. You do want to go ahead and make sure that you label, um, your, um, so like you want to make sure you label your two inch by, uh, two inch by two inch square and you label your pattern pieces as well. Um, so I would put, um, you know, one exterior, one interior, I can't spell, interior, one woven interfacing. or whatever it is you're gonna need. So you do wanna make sure that you properly label each of the pieces um, so that they know. Um, I like this personally as someone who uses projector files, I like this to be in big font. Um, so if you can make it as big as possible, um, do that. And then with your cut lines, like this is a three point, that's a pretty good, as you can see up here, the stroke is a three. That's a pretty good um, line to make. Um, because otherwise some if the line is too thin it's hard to see it when you're um when it's on your fabric um but again just want to add that note make sure you're labeling your pattern pieces and what is needed um now i'm done and thanks for joining me